Jack O'Sullivan's distraught parents have said that they follow his last stroll every day in the hopes of discovering something that could provide them with information about what transpired. In the early hours of March 2nd, the 23-year-old law graduate disappeared after attending a house party on Bristol's Hotwell Road. Catherine O'Sullivan, his mother, remembered how she realized. Something's wrong. The moment she woke up that morning, soon after five o'clock, she soon realized that her kid was missing, and she was able to confirm that he wasn't at the party location by utilizing Find My Friends. She headed out right away with her husband, Alan, to find him in the first of what would soon turn out to be many days of hell. Every hour matters to us. You can't make plans for the following day. All we can do is talk to the cops and wait. We're waiting, Ms. O'Sullivan said to the newspaper. Jack's mother characterized him as sporty, determined, and gentle. He turned 23 on March 28th, over a month after going missing. He put a tremendous amount of effort into his next steps, the woman stated. He had already obtained a summer placement, which is extremely difficult to obtain. However, he submitted 45 applications. Jack is a really good chap, she continued. He is quite kind. All he wanted to do was check on everyone else. He had taken the bus from his village, Flaxporton, to a Weatherspoons pub in the city at 8.20 p.m. on a typical Saturday night out, where he met up with friends. He contacted his mother at 10.45 p.m. to let her know they had moved on to a home party and had made it there without incident. He wrote, All good keys are safe. Finally, at 1.52 in the morning, he texted her to let her know he was fine. Jack then departed the party by himself just before three in the morning. Part of his journey through the city was filmed by CCTV as he left the house party, crossed the junction swing bridge, and turned along Brunel Lock Road at roughly three and a half in the morning. At 3.24 a.m., he gave a call to a friend who was still at the party. A mere hello was said by Jack when the friend picked up the phone ten minutes later. Before the call was disconnected, it was on for 58 seconds. According to Ms. O'Sullivan, the buddy quickly left the celebration. She made numerous attempts to contact him but was unsuccessful. Please let me know where you are, please let me know you're okay, and please let me know when you return home were the messages she texted him. In an attempt to understand what life would have been like for Jack and to gather any clues as to what might have happened, his family has now started walking his final path every day and at various times of the day. I wanted to feel the temperature and see if it was dark. However, it's really well lit, they remarked. According to the officers, he used the Find My Friend app on his phone until 6.44 a.m. Since then, the police have had to convey the terrible news to his parents. They are investigating the possibility that he fell into the river. They also brought a key that had been discovered by the authorities, and which they believed to be Jack's to the family. However, it wasn't his. As part of a significant number of searches, detectives had employed dogs, dive teams, and drones in the River Avon, according to senior investigating officer D.I. Jason Chiji. Along with conducting thorough CCTV searches and door-to-door -door investigations, Detectives have also examined Jack's phone to see why it remained active following his most recent verified sighting. Nevertheless, Dead and Spchigi acknowledged that his squad was still attempting to determine Jack's whereabouts after his final CCTV encounter. We are continuing our efforts to try and find him during this extremely difficult and distressing time for Jack's family and friends. He stated that we strongly advise people to contact us even if they don't think their information is relevant because even the tiniest piece of information could have a significant impact on our inquiry. Although Jack is quite out of character, we are keeping an open mind about his whereabouts and have been diligently monitoring his travels that evening. About 5 feet 10 inches, 178 centimeters, tall, with a thin body and short, brown hair, Mr. O'Sullivan is described as white. When he was last seen, he was sporting blue chinos, brown leather sneakers with white soles, and a quilted green-slash-brown barber jacket over a beige wool sweater.